Okay, I just wanted to go over some of the um, the basics of the implant add-on I've been working on. It's still uh, probably a good deal, uh, good deal to go before it's even remotely useful. But just tossing around some ideas, I wanted to document um, what's available. So first, I've opened up the uh, Pour Le Fun dot blend, which is available in the non in the this folder that you've shared with me. Um, I went ahead and deleted all the objects associated with the implant and just have the data from the CT scan uh, this surface representing a section of the mandible and the inferior alveolar nerve canal. Um, before we get into uh, the actual add-on I have as an example this folder called implants which I've put here um, and this is, would represent uh, kind of a generic implant library where each implant that you might work with would have its own folder. Um, within that folder is uh, a 3D model, whether it be STL or op, you know, op.obj or any other standard 3D mesh format representing the implant itself. And then a separate folder representing all the associated hardware, be it um, collision, which I think represents kind of a a region around the implant, which might be like a safety region, an aligner or a coping or a custom abutment, or the you know the the bushing which you would use to put into a surgical guide to limit the the depth that your burrs might go, your osteotomy burrs, etc. So this is um this is just a proposal in terms of how this could be organized, and if there's some other standard, which how normal implant files are stored, we can always adapt. Uh, I can adapt my script to fit any kind of organization as long as we have good access to uh, the models and we know exactly you know, the standard by which they're saved, whether it's you know, everything is in one folder and there's a certain naming convention or if they're named however and stored in different folder hierarchy conventions, that can all be um, adapted later. So this is just proof of concept. So the first thing I'll do is enable the add-on. Okay. So a lot of times I've noticed that the the file representing the bone is not centered at the origin. So this is not a huge problem if you want to use local view. You can just simply we can simply select it. Actually uh, you can select the object and use local view to limit what we're looking at and center us on that object. But the problem is, is this causes some, some trouble for me when I'm trying to place implants at the 3D cursor. So I made this function called center and scene, which will pull everything to the center. Um, if you have different objects parented to each other, it can cause problems, but for now, if we just center and scene, uh, we notice nothing happens. That's because these are locked. Now if we center and scene, everything <clears throat> jumps here. Um, so I'll do that, make sure that this is unlocked. And now, okay, good. So now all of our models are centered. Um, it's just an average of their two positions. And we can, it leaves them both selected so we can move them to be more or less centered in the scene. And this is not a huge deal, but it's just more convenient. So if, even if you're clicking around and you use Shift C to recenter you, you're in the area with your models, and you don't have to worry about um, any transform constraints caused by local view. If you want to limit what you're looking at, I suggest using the um, visibility icons over here. So the my 
add-on is organized by the edentulous spaces that you want to fill. And these are just the ones that you're going to place an implant in. And I know that an implant doesn't always correspond with a specific edentulous space, but a good way to keep track of what implant you're placing um, would be to almost assign each one a particular space. We just take this as an example. We can let's assume we're going to place two implants here in the fourth quadrant and maybe in the you know five and seven or like so we'll add a space to fill. Call it four five. How about yeah, four four. seven. Just these are just as proof of concept. So secondly, um, the implant library is something you should be able to set up one time and then save the dot blend file and not have to adjust again. There's there's two options here. We can import each implant individually or we can set a folder as the library and import all the implants in that folder. So if I choose this folder on my computer which has these two example implants, then that sets my implant library folder and then I can import all the implants from that directory. Here I can remove them both if I wanted to import them individually. Let's say you had a, an extensive implant library but you just wanted to work with a few to limit your number of choices or just for convenience. Um, we can import an individual implant. You select the folder and there it brings in just that one. Okay, so now that these are here, and all these are really references to the location of your 3D models on your computer. So it's not um, these haven't actually loaded a lot of data into your blend file. And the reason I did that is I could imagine someone eventually having an implant library consisting of several hundred different types, sizes, varieties of implants where the actual, it wouldn't be efficient to have them all loaded into the blend file. It would waste a lot of computer resources. So here this keeps a link and doesn't actually pull the file in until you need it. So I've added this function called slice view, which will simply it'll split the view into the into the quad view, and also limit the view to a, a slice thickness. So we can adjust the thickness to maybe three millimeters, and then we can look at where we're going by placing the cursor and the cursor location. Having the view snap to the cursor location is critical for this to work. So you want to lock the cursor right here. Okay, and then this seems to always appear blank until you move around. But this will be a view that has the same thickness as the others, but you can um, kind of adjust the viewing angle. And you can go back to normal view. Let's assume we want to place an implant. somewhere in here, go to slice view, more precisely locate our placement, looks fine. And then when I click the place implant um, button, it will take the implant which is selected here and associate it with the space we have selected here. And we'll also rename it. Um, so if I want to put an implant right here, I'll select 1041, location 4.5 and we'll place an implant and we'll include the hardware with it. And you'll notice that here it's both renamed it with the space number and the implant name and then pulled in all of the associated hardware. Um, I'll go over some of the ways to then orient the implant in the next video but for now